and the BJP's list of candidates uh, is to be out soon. In fact, a BJP CEC meeting ended at 3.30 a.m. in the morning today and the party is now expected to release a bulk list ahead of the announcement of the election date. So this is the latest update that is coming in as far as the BJP's list of candidates uh, uh, is concerned. The list is uh, expected to be out today. And CNN News 18's Pail Mehta is now joining us with more details as far as the BJP's list of candidates is concerned. Payal, over to you. Uh, yes, you know, the meeting, in fact, went on till uh, about 3.30 this morning. Uh, ahead of the Prime Minister and the other leaders' arrival at the party headquarters at around 11 o'clock uh, last night, the BJP leadership, which is Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Amit Shah and, uh, you know, JP Nadda, they had a meeting among themselves at the Prime Minister's official residence at 7 local and Mark, and that meeting also went on for more than a couple of hours. The Saffron party will be releasing its first list as early as 24 to 48 hours time is what we are given to understand. And at the top of the list obviously will be the name of Prime Minister Narendra Modi who is expected to contest from Varanasi, Amit Shah from Gandhinagar, Rajdan Singh from Lucknow, Nitin Gadkari from Nagpur and of course, uh, you know, Smriti Rani from Amiti. These are some of the certainties as far as the party is concerned. The party has to look at a lot of options. They are going to look at winnability as far as anything else is concerned, Anjali. Uh, with the fact that they already have decided that they will contest all the 17 seats, for example, in Telangana. And uh, the three uh, sitting MPs will be repeated. In fact, Swayam Bapu Rao, who lost his assembly seat, uh, is, is unexpected to get a ticket. He's not going to get a ticket, is what we're given to understand. And interestingly, unlike last time around, this time around also the BJP will be fielding a candidate versus Asutas in the OAC. We are given to understand that a Hindu candidate who is essentially a doctor will be fielded, a woman will be fielded versus Asutas in the OAC from Hyderabad. And the BJP is also finalizing its seats as far as Uttar Pradesh is concerned. Uttar Pradesh is 80 seats in all. The Saffron party has to give away some seats to its allies because RJD is a potential ally and so is Anupriya Patel, Anupriya Patel's party. Another they're expected to give them two seats each and of course other smaller parties will be given two seats each. So in the la in the meeting last night, the party finalized more than 56 seats as far as Uttar Pradesh is concerned. That's the biggest uh, state in the country and obviously other discussions also took place. Uh, there is also a lot of interest whether or not, you know, the former chief ministers of the states uh, of Madhya Pradesh, Bihar, uh, Chhattisgarh and Rajasthan will they contest. We are given to understand that there will be no contesting as far as Raman Singh is concerned or Vasudhara Raja but Shivraj Singh Chauhan who also recently met the Prime Minister is expected to contest from Vidisha, which is the, uh, which is the constituency right. of the late Sushma Swaraj. And uh, the biggest change that we are expecting to see is going to be in Delhi. Anjali, we are expecting at least four out of the seven candidates in Delhi will be fielded as new candidates. Also, Pyle, so what is going to be the strategy of the BJP in the upcoming polls? Tell us more about that. Uh, they're going to win. Uh, they're going to focus only on winnability, given the fact that you have 370 seats that the Prime Minister has given them as a target for the BJP to really win. So they're doing all of that. Uh, in, uh, and that's the reason the intense discussions took place uh, throughout the last week with core group meetings taking place with JP Nadda and Amit Shah. And of course, the focus of the party will be to give to seats to those candidates who can win and ensure that they can add to the tally as far as the BJP is really concerned. But this is not just an overnight call. The party over the last couple of years, Anjali, has been taking a feedback on each and every MP, how they've featured, what kind of work they've done. There, of course, there have been a lot of feedbacks that have come to the party on the Namo app. Uh, people on ground, uh, of course, surveys have also taken place as well. Uh, the central observers were sent. There are ministers who were, who were assigned various weak seats. They've come back and given the report in terms of what the feedback of certain candidates is really concerned. But as far as the weak Lok Sabha seats are concerned, that's going to be the first priority of the BJP. The results were there for everybody to see in Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh when they declared seats in advance. The candidates were able to win because they were able to hit the ground running and able to create an impact as well. So indication has also been given to certain candidates in those regions as saying that they should start preparing. But there are a lot of central ministers also who are in the fray. For example, there's Murli Dharan who is in the fray and of course Rajiv Chandrasekhar both from Kerala where the BJP is yet to open its score. It will be important to see if they actually feel, uh, you know, V. Mur uh, L. Murugan, despite giving him a Rajya Sabha from, uh, you know, uh, from uh, from Tamil Nadu, that also remains to be seen. But yes, the top-notch guys' names are going to be out first, but the BJP will be uh, holding the discussion seat by seat to ensure that maximum effort is put to win each and every seat because getting the 370 target is not an easy task at all.